Welcome back. So today we are going to see the TDD that is the test driven development and then we will see few of the pitfalls of the test driven development and how it is uh, suppressed by the BDD that is your behavioral driven development and then we will see few of the uh, what you call benefits of the BDD as well. Now let's first see what is TDD. Now TDD is basically the test driven development which means that it's a test first development approach approach where you will be writing the tests even before writing the enough production code. So it means that your product is not yet implemented completely but you started or you have uh, you have written the test cases. Okay. Now why are we doing that? So before to that let's see another point. So it says that to make the test pass refactor the production code it means that now for sure actually your application is not yet ready but you are executing the test cases now it will become fail now you will go back to your application or the code base or the source code and you will be changing that or updating that so that your test cases will be showing as green or it means that it is passing okay now why are we doing that so the main goal is to take check the specification or requirements are properly aligned or not so it means that now we can say that the test cases are treating as a requirement matrix actually there like what are the functionalities of that application and whether it is working fine or not that first you take the test case as a reference now as your test cases will fail, you need to make it pass. How do you do that? By implementing the production code. Okay. So just to give a pictorial representation on the right hand side, let's first see that what it says. So you will start, let's say that this is your entry to your software development and you are adding some new test cases. Okay. A at the same time, the developer might be writing few of the what you call his application code or setting up his environment and all those things. Now when the time comes you will be running those tests actually and the test now here I'm saying it could be your unit test it could be your integration test okay any kind of these things. Now when you are running that test for sure actually most of your test cases will fail. Now when the test cases are failing that uh, that's where actually you will be making changes to your production code or the product code actually. Now once you do the changes you will be again running those test cases. So while it is running the test cases, it might fail. Now once it is failing, again you will be keep on doing the changes to that until your test cases will become passed. Now once your test cases are passed either from the, at the first instance or after making some changes, again you will be keep on adding new test cases to cover, uh, to, uh, to have more coverage into the requirement. So whatever your requirement is there, all those requirements should be done actually. So that's how the TDD approach is uh, going on. Now to support actually this TDD that is the test driven development uh, each language has its own unit testing framework like for an instance if you are using Java then there is J unit or test ng which is supporting the developers to write their own test the same thing if you are using Python you can have unit test you can have your PyTest the same thing if you are using your .NET you can have your MS test or any unit so all these unit testing frameworks works are helping you to write your unit tests okay now coming to the QA world like let's say that uh, you are uh, you are writing your UI test cases so in that case also we are using all this unit testing frameworks right we use some kind of libraries to perform certain browser actions and automate the functionalities okay so that's how we are approaching towards the TDD now one problem with the TTT is that it is more cost actually. So here we are spending more money and then the resources are more as well. The, the reason being is that the application is not yet ready. Now we are, uh, we are like completely relying on our test cases. Now what if your test cases are not covered enough actually to uh, what do you call to implement the functionalities. Let's say that we missed certain non-functional requirements as well. Test cases might only focusing into the functional requirements. 
that's where the problem is coming now coming to the qa world again let me show you this one actually this picture which will give you a uh, good understanding about your tdd what are the demerits or the pitfalls of the tdd okay so let's say that uh, we have a business actually there is a business there is a product owner and there is some technical managers are there they they got the requirement they analyzed a bit about the requirement the same requirement they have put it to the what do you call development and then the qa folks okay now the development team and then the qa folks are sitting now they have got the requirements okay now once they have got the development will be writing its own development code actually by uh, to implement the product the same way qa will be going ahead and then trying to write the ui test cases for sure actually there are wireframes already there wireframes in the sense this the initial draft of the requirement probably they might have given about uh, how the functionality what and all screens looks like whether it is a a radio button or a checkbox or what kind of controls we will be having or probably they might give you even the unique locators as well for each of the elements so you know the functionality you have the html dome the draft version now you can go and write the unit testing or the ui test cases right the same thing development will go and uh, write the uh, what do you call the production code as well or the product code now the what happens when you run the test cases now i'm coming more inclining towards the automation testing okay now for sure actually let's say that uh, uh, we we got to know that the product i mean before even the product is implemented it is bad approach to execute your test cases right that's where actually we will hold it off till your product is available now for sure let's think about uh, let's move ahead with the ttd approach and let's say that the team decided that now once the product is uh, available or implemented or it is deployed now the test cases will be run on top of the product now there for sure actually the it will minimize the number of test cases failures and then because you uh, both of the development and qa folks got the requirements at the same time they might be in sync to up to some extent about the requirement right so you need not to execute your test cases before to the product uh, into the production and make sure that uh, it should fail and then you implement or you change the source code to make it as green so that thing at least we now eradicated from here but there is still a catch actually here now the thing is that let's say that you have written few of the test cases you have already made it as uh, fixed let's say that there could be some of the automation test code problem you fix that there are some application problems are there you t spoke to your developer or you raised the issues or tickets now as per that your production uh, your product is also fixed now everything is working fine in a good scenario but how are you making sure that all of the test cases or all of the test scripts whatever you have written is kind of covering the entire requirement okay so there is no such documented way actually in this okay so now when the business is coming now when we we will be talking to the business business might say that okay you have written hundreds of test cases which you are saying that it is covering the entire requirement but how i am making sure that for each test scenarios or each scenarios you have covered all the steps because as a business or as a non tech person let's say that the product owner or the business analyst might not be that educated to look into your script whether you have written that in java or dotnet or in python they cannot go to each and every lines of your code or test script and make sure that you have covered all the steps of that particular scenario so that is where actually the tdd approach is failing now what we are doing to overcome that even what we do we do a continuous feedback actually with the product owner and with the business now not in terms of the test script but what normally the team does they kind of write an excel sheet uh, we call it as a requirement traceability matrix or test cases traceability matrix where we write all the test cases let's say that if you have hundreds or 200s of test cases you write that and against each of your test case or the test methods you will be explaining what are the steps you have 
kind of uh, what do you call covered in your test script now the same excel sheet will be now transferred to your uh, business or the product owner now the product owner will be kind of reviewing that excel sheet and making sure if you have covered all other scenarios or all other test steps and they can give you a feedback whether to add or update anything so that is one of the way we are what do you call making or taking a step ahead to uh, what do you call overcome the pitfalls of this TDD. But again, there is a problem is that you have to have an extra step that is writing an Excel sheet. And that is all like kind of an extra headache for an automation engineer to do all these things and then take it to the business analyst, reviewing those, those things and then ge getting the feedback from them and updating the test cases again. So which is kind of time consuming and also it's involved a bit of uh, the resource also as well okay so to overcome all these things the BDD came into the picture okay so which is behavior driven development in one word I can say instead of writing the test cases or test scenarios you write the behaviors of that application which covers your functional and non-functional requirements so BDD says that it's a software development approach on TDD. So BDD doesn't say that you completely avoid TDD. It's just a layer on top of your TDD actually. That's a, it's a, just an approach on top of TDD or test driven development where you can do what you need to do that document the discussions, requirements or features in a natural language. It means that when you are dealing with a, this step, when the business development and QA, all three, this all three, what do you call departments are talking each other, make sure that you are documenting the requirements or the discussions, whatever questions you asked, what feedbacks you got it from the business. You talk about like a user standpoint, what is exactly that product is uh, developing for and how exactly the user will be behaving by using that particular product. So all these questions along with your requirement, everything you need to document it. But that documentation has to be in a natural language. Okay, so that all of these three parties can understand that in future. Okay, now we will come to the natural language in a moment. Now improves the communication between the tech and non-tech members. Like here we have the non-tech like who is not exactly knowing about the technical implementation and this is where actually the technical team is there. Now when you are documenting the discussions it will be making sure that the development and then the QA are more confident on the requirement so that they can go back and then write their code base, whether it is the development code or the automation code without any uh, problems actually, because they know about the functionality in detail. So they don't be again going back to the business and then asking for more questions. So that is what we need to make sure in BTD. Okay. Now, for sure it is improvising the communication and it is dividing the user stories into real-time scenarios. So that's what I said, right? Don't think about a test scenarios. Like if I'm clicking on this button, what is happening? That is more into the application perspective I'm thinking. But let's not think about the application standpoint, but as a behavioral aspect. Why am I developing this product? How it is benefiting to my customers or the end users who are using? So that behavior, if you are taking into consideration, you can have more scenarios in your, uh, what do you call, while you are doing the brainstorming or you're discussing there. Okay. Now it is improving the, uh, or improvising the tracking of the test coverage because now when you are writing the test cases or the documenting those, uh, what do you call behaviors. Now, based on that, you will be writing the automation script, right? If any of those behaviors, if you didn't write, or if you didn't implement that in your test case, the tool will give you an error. So that is the beauty of the tools that is supporting BDD. There are tools like one of the popular tool is Cucumber. Okay, uh, Specflow we are using in .NET. Uh, so all of these Specflow or Cucumber. So these are the tools which is helping you to write this natural language. Okay. Now, if you are uh, if you are not sure about this natural language, we call it as a Gherkin syntaxes. 
which is plain english but it is uh, you have to follow a very minimal standards so that uh, even somebody is from non tech background they can even write the scenarios for you as well so that's the beauty of this natural language okay so we have already seen bdd in detail actually especially the theoretical part of that i will share those links into this description so you can go into that how do you learn about writing the natural language that is the gherkin syntaxes what are the syntaxes are there and how will you uh, what you call implement that into your test script so each of your line each of your line of that particular document should be implemented properly in your ui automation framework if any one of the step you if you are missing that's how the tool is designed it will give you an error so that you even don't need to go back to your uh, technical or your product team to talk about any other coverage as a automation analyst you will come to know that what other things you are missing from that document and you can go back and implement those things as well Th there are some uh, what you call arguments people are making about bdd they say that okay i'm very much comfortable with my excel sheet where i'm writing all the test cases and then against those steps my product owner is very much fine with that so i'm too good with that so just continue with that but there are certain clients or the stakeholders those who do really don't uh, what do you call feel comfortable with those excel sheets because the data can be interpreted in a different way so that's where actually they say that uh, even though you are replacing that excel sheet with an extra headache now because see even bdd uh, is a layer on top of your existing framework right because uh, you have to implement as per the cucumber tool actually that one it means that you are doing very minimal changes to your framework to support uh, cucumber right or the bdd framework so that means that you have to depend on that document actually that uh, gherkin syntaxes but still because it is saving a lot of time so that's why most of the organizations or the product uh, designing or product implementation whoever is doing newly they normally prefer to go into the bdd okay so uh, so that's pretty much it about the bdd and the tdd now you have got to know about in detail about these two approaches now whenever you are talking to your product or to your manager you can take into consideration all these points now whichever you are feeling comfortable you can take it because it's really a subjective argument to have either tdd approach or a bdd approach so that's pretty much it hope you uh, you got some knowledge about these two things this is more into the theoretical part for sure actually whatever language we are learning now uh, whether it is selenium cypress or protractor or in apm we can implement the bdd okay so in our upcoming sessions we will see how we can implement cucumber into different uh, tools or different frameworks that we are using Okay so stay tuned and do subscribe to this YouTube channel thank you for watching